hey, I get this question all the time. Can you build me a 110 twin cam? Now the short answer is I most definitely can build you it. Am I going to? Absolutely not. Listen, you guys are in luck. Today on Gnarly's, I have all three engine sizes to build. I have a stock 88, I have a 95, and I have a 98. Or for those of you that have a Dyna 2007 and later, I have a stock 96, bored out to a 103, and also a 107. No 110s, and we're gonna be talking about sacrificing bore size for reliability, as well as cylinder wall thickness, and how big can you really go inside of a stock twin cam. My name's Cam, welcome to the channel. This is Gnarly's, let's go. Hey, so this is kind of like a part two to engine displacement. If you haven't already seen that video, go over to my YouTube, link in the bio, go check that out. You're gonna to wanna to watch that video before you watch this one. One thing I wanna talk about right away is engine displacement. Now, engine displacement from the previous video is the relationship between the bore size and the throw of the crank. Okay, so we are gonna address crankshafts right off the bat. From 1999 to 2006, Harley-Davidson's used a four inch crankshaft, okay? From 2007 and on, they used a four and three eighths crankshaft. In 2007, on Dyna models, you're gonna see a big jump in the stock engine displacement. I want you to understand that the crankshaft changed, but the cylinder is the exact same from an 88 to a 96. It has the same exact bore. And we're gonna go over this more in detail. So right off the bat, what exactly is boring out your cylinder? Boring out the cylinder is taking material out of this hole right here so we can get a bigger piston in there. Now, if we get the bigger piston in there, we can suck more fuel air in there, which means we're gonna make more power. But this is not a free trade-off and it comes with a very heavy price. Look how thick this cylinder wall is right here. This cylinder wall is about 155 thousandths thick. We're gonna get this cylinder inside of here extremely hot. We want this cylinder to hold up with, to that heat over a long period of time. There's no sense in spending five, $6,000 on an engine, and then you go out there and you cook it within one season. And what exactly do I mean by that? If we're getting those cylinder walls too thin, what ends up happening is over time, they're gonna to start to warp. And a piston does not go perfectly up and down inside of a cylinder, it does more like this. So over time, what can happen is you can start to really wallow out the cylinder. So I'm gonna show you the most common bore sizes, then we're gonna do some math and we're gonna take out material of the cylinder wall, we're gonna measure how much material is in the cylinder wall, and we're gonna see how far we can go. So let's do it. So this is a stock 88 inch cylinder. Based on what bore size we go with, the four most common, we're gonna figure out what the new cylinder wall thickness is. So let's take this one as a baseline. This is 3.750, and that's the measurement from here to here, okay? That's a diameter. The second baseline is cylinder wall thickness. Wall thickness here. So the baseline for cylinder wall thickness is 155 thousandths. Now we're gonna to go to the next bore size, which would be a 95 or a 103, and we're gonna start calculating what these are. So the difference between a 95 and an 88 is 125 thousandths of an inch. That is the overall diameter of what we took out of the cylinder wall, right? We're gonna divide this number in half, and this is gonna leave us with 63 thousandths. Now this is more of a radius. This is, instead of saying how much we took out of each side, this is saying how much we took out of one side. Lastly, we're gonna take our baseline, which was 155 thousandths, and we're gonna subtract it by 63 thousandths. This is gonna give us our new cylinder wall thickness. That number is 91 thousandths of an inch. Let's go ahead and measure that and see if that's right. So there you have it. So right around 90 thousandths of an inch. Let's go up to the 107 or a 98 inch. Now for me, this is kind of pushing it, especially if you're an aggressive rider. If you're used to abusing your bike, this is not the way you should go, and this is not gonna hold up over time. Now this is a 107. I want you to look at how thin these cylinder walls actually are. Let's do the quick numbers on that. To go from three and three quarters, to 3.937, we're gonna have to take out 187 thousandths of an inch overall. So we're gonna divide that number in half to figure out what, what we're gonna take out of one side. So it's gonna give us 93 thousandths. Now we're gonna take 155 thousandths, subtract it by 93 thousandths, and this gives us our new cylinder wall thickness. This is gonna leave us with 62 thousandths of an inch. Let's look at that. 
So right around there, 61, 60 thousands. So right around 60 thousands of an inch. So as you guys can see, we went from a three and three quarter bore to almost four inches of bore and we lost two thirds of our cylinder wall thickness. This motor right here needs to be very well taken care of and babied if you want it to last a long time. So lastly, let's do a four inch bore and you guys can tell me if you think it's worth doing it. Let's do some numbers on it. So to go from four inches from a 3.75, we have to take out 250 thousandths of an inch, okay? And that means we're gonna have to take out a total of 125 thousandths of the cylinder wall. Now our stock is 155, minus 125, guys, you're left with 30 thousandths of an inch. At my last job, Naylor Performance, who pretty much taught me everything I know about building engines, we had a 110 there and you had to put the cylinder upside down because if you put the cylinder on the cylinder wall, they had a chance to fold. This is how thin your cylinder wall is. This is 30 thousandths of an inch. My phone can't even focus on it. This is how thin your cylinder wall is. We're asking for the maximum heat, shock, and friction for power with the absolute minimum for tolerance. Just because you can, doesn't mean you should. And even that, just because you can, doesn't mean you should, right? My stunt riding guys at, you can, you can build a 10 over 88 or even go to a 95 low compression. This is not gonna hold up to limiter Larry's over a couple of years of time. And in fact, this still needs to even be baby the way you guys are riding. For most people, I'm never gonna do four inches. And selective people, like this customer right here, I'll build him a 107 because I know he's gonna take care of it and do a good job. So now you guys can actually see with your own two eyes when someone says the cylinder walls are too thin for a 110, now you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're left with 30 thousandths of an inch. Hey guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Leave a comment, that really helps me out. Let me know what bore size you guys have, what crank you guys have. I love to discuss it more. I love a good thread in the comment section. So my name's Cam, this is Gnarly's. Thanks for watching, welcome to the channel. Let's go.